Vanguard in the UK has just made 30 of its accumulation funds available on its own platform. And while they didn't make a big song and dance about this, this is Vanguard after all, I think this makes their UK offering more attractive. And that's because it now covers the basics very well. And at the end of the video, I'll show what I've chosen to do as a result of this change, but also my reasons behind it. I have changed my portfolio. Now, if you do enjoy our content, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. So let's look at the range of new funds available on Vanguard in a bit more detail. I think building a portfolio is a bit like cooking. You need certain essentials in your kitchen cupboard. So here are the absolute basics. You've got olive oil, salt, pepper, butter, and just the basic stuff that you need to make a meal taste good. And similarly, when you're building a portfolio, I think you really need just a very few basic funds. The most important, I'd say, for long-term return is going to be your global stock fund. And that's because global stocks over the long term offer you the best return. Usually they beat inflation by around 5 or 6% over many decades. So in that sense, they're less risky than the other stuff which people think of as being low risk. And that, of course, would include things like bond funds. And you can have global bond funds or you can have your local government bond fund. Now, in the UK, we've got gilts, which are very safe, very little credit risk, and which I think are probably as good as a global bond fund. But a third type of fund, which I think is now more attractive, are money market funds. And these are even safer than those government bond funds, because if interest rates increase or decrease, it doesn't affect their price. And now that central banks are increasing their short-term interest rates, including the Bank of England, of course, but also the Federal Reserve, these money market funds are picking up that higher rate of interest and passing it on to you. So if we look at returns for three funds from those categories, you can see the stocks are all over the place. They're very volatile, but they do offer higher long-term returns. Although this period is only since 2019, when full data was available for all three funds. So that's the VWRL line in blue, which you can see at the top of the graph. Languishing at the bottom of the graph is VAGS, which is Vanguard's global bond fund. That's pretty beaten up after the big bond sell-off in 2022. But usually people choose bond funds in order to diversify their stocks. Now that comes with a risk because if interest rates do increase, the value of those funds can fall sharply. And this is why now personally, I only ever invest in single government bonds because there you never have to take a loss. You just hold the bonds to maturity. Unfortunately, you still can't do that on Vanguard's UK platform. But if you don't like taking a loss on the safe component of your portfolio, then this third option, which is money market funds, offers you that stability. That's the third line which you can see on this graph, which has no volatility at all. Initially, it also had no return when interest rates were at zero. But now that the Bank of England has been raising that short term interest rate, its money market fund has started to pick up that higher income. Although the version of the money market fund that you can see here is not available to UK investors. It's the accumulation fund which you can see here. In the UK, you can only buy the income version of their money market fund. So these are the essential kitchen ingredients in order to build a recipe for your long term investment success. And just to illustrate that, I've shown here the returns if you'd have bought a portfolio with a certain split between stocks and bonds going back to 2012. Now, what I've done is to gradually dial up the risk by increasing the amount of stocks in the portfolio from 0% all the way up to 100% stocks. Notice that over the long term, 100% stocks has performed by far the best. And in my core portfolio holdings, which make up 90% of my investments, I am 100% invested in just one global stock fund. And you can see the annualized return for that 100% equity portfolio is around 9.7% over this period, which is fairly typical over the long term. As you dial down the risk, you also dial down the return. The theory being that you'd sleep better at night because the portfolio is less crashy. So if you're investing over the shorter term, you probably want to dial down the equity risk because what you don't want is to suffer a crash just as you need your money. Now, in 2022, bonds suffered their worst sell off ever as yield curves shifted upwards and prices shifted downwards. They move in opposite directions. But if, for example, you'd have used money market funds as your safe component in your portfolio, 
We can repeat the exercise from before, substituting the money market fund, which doesn't suffer from yield curve movements, for the bond fund, which does. And you can see that if you had 100% in the money market fund, you wouldn't have suffered any losses at all during that really big sell-off in 2020. But at the same time, you're sacrificing a lot of return because you're taking almost no risk. So this is why I don't have any bonds or any money market funds in my long-term portfolio. Now, all of the funds which Vanguard's made available on its UK platform are accumulation funds. So let's just quickly explain the difference between accumulation and income funds and why you might choose one over the other. Here I contrast two versions of the same fund, and it really is exactly the same fund. All of the stocks which it owns, and it's a global stock fund, are exactly the same. The only difference between these two versions of the fund is that one of them will pay you an income in terms of cash payments, and the other one reinvests those cash dividends which are received on the stocks it owns and reinvest them back into the fund. So the income reappears to you as an accumulation in the capital gain of the fund. Notice also how the price of the red fund, which is the accumulation version of the fund, gradually increases above the black line, which is the income version of the fund. And that's because of the steady reinvestment of those dividends. The larger the dividends, the larger the divergence, the rate at which it grows between the two lines. So while these two funds are identical, their prices are different, and they'll drift further apart over time as the dividends are reinvested. Now, I always invest in accumulation funds. And the reason for that, the primary reason, is that Vanguard can reinvest those dividends much more efficiently and cheaply than I can. Furthermore, they'll be much more disciplined about that reinvestment and they can do it much more quickly than I would. I'll have cash languishing in my account if I have an income version of a fund before I get around to reinvesting it, whereas they'll probably do it immediately. Another reason why I like accumulation funds is that it requires less maintenance. I'm not getting dribs and drabs of cash appearing in my brokerage account, which I then have to think about reinvesting. And then finally, I don't need an income. The primary purpose of this investment is to have maximum capital gain until the time when I need it. Contrast that with someone who's already retired. Then in that case, they do need an income. So for those people, I think an income fund makes more sense. Now, members of the pension craft community who have these accumulation funds outside an ISA or a SIP, I don't, tell me that it's a real headache declaring this on their self-assessment tax. That's because you still have to manually split out the income component from the capital gain component. It's called excess reportable income and it is a tricky process. So in that case, it might be a bit easier to have an income version of a fund where everything is absolutely explicit. Income is income capital gain is capital gain, and you can declare the two separately. So now we know the distinction between income and accumulation, let's look at these 30 accumulation exchange traded funds, which are now available on Vanguard's platform. So here are the 30 exchange traded funds, all accumulation funds, which are now available on Vanguard's UK platform. Why weren't they available before? Because they were available on other platforms, I'm not sure, but I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth. Now there are some funds here which I think are more useful than others, and I'll focus on the ones which I think are the critical kitchen cupboard ingredients. So here's the most important one I think, which is VWRP. Now this is a global fund, a global stock fund. The ongoing fee for the fund is 0.22%, which is not particularly cheap. And personally, I'd go for the accumulation version of the fund. So here it is on Vanguard's website, and I'm just gonna show you that it is really exactly the same fund, just two different versions of it. The one which was available previously was called VWRL, the income version. And as you can see, they say that distributes any dividends to you to take as an income. But focus down here on the number of stocks. It's 3,658 stocks. And if we switch back to the accumulation fund, it contains exactly the same list of 3,658 stocks. What is different between the two is the price. So as I make this video, the price of the VWRP fund is just under £90 and the income fund is just over £90. Now what you'd expect over time is that the price difference would gradually increase as the dividends are reinvested into VWRP. But make no mistake, this is the same fund. The fee is the same, the stocks are the same, the risk is the same. 
So I think for someone who's building a long-term portfolio, that VWRP fund is particularly useful. Now, I personally haven't chosen to buy it, and I think that's because of the high fee which it's got, but we'll talk about that in a sec. Now, the second component which people need as their essential ingredient to their long-term portfolio is often a global bond fund. And here again, you can see Vanguard made the accumulation version of the fund that was available before, the income version. So this is the fund that was available before, VAGP. It's sterling hedged, so you're not taking currency risk with this investment. And if we switch to the hedged accumulation version of the fund, the only thing which changed was the price. The bonds it holds are exactly the same, the ongoing charge is exactly the same, and so is the risk. Now for UK investors, I think this UK gilt fund, the accumulation version, is probably just as good as a global bond fund. You will get a bit more diversification across yield curves. So if you're worried that the UK government is going to be irresponsible with its spending, then perhaps you do want to diversify across global yield curves. But if you're not particularly worried about that, then this fund would probably be okay. Notice the ongoing charge for this is very low, just 0.07%. That's because gilts are very cheap to trade for an institutional investor like Vanguard. Now, the risk level for this is 5 rather than 3, which is what we saw for that global bond fund. And that's because the duration, which is a measure of risk for bond funds, is fairly long for UK gilts. That's because the UK government tends to issue for long periods of time and these longer dated bonds are more volatile. So there we have it. Thank you to Vanguard for finally releasing these funds, which frankly they should have done a while ago and which I think completes their suite of funds for basic investments, their basic kitchen cupboard ingredients. Now, if you do want to keep up with what's going on in markets, but also to learn how to invest, one way to do that is by signing up to our free weekly market roundup. We deliver it on a Friday evening as soon as it's written. We won't spam you with lots of junk emails and we try to make it entertaining. So here's our take on the autumn statement, for example. We always have a main story followed by some news bites and we always try to keep it short, punchy and entertaining. To learn more about that, just click on the link beside me or in the description below. But it's still not all good, and I think there are still some things which Vanguard needs to change to make themselves really stand out from their competitors. For example, if you do want a global accumulation ETF, Invesco now offers one for just 0.15% expense ratio. I know it doesn't sound like much, but that's considerably lower than the 0.22% for VWRP. Now, given its rapidly increasing scale in the UK, I think Vanguard probably will reduce the fees on that fund. But if I had the choice, I'd go for the one from Invesco. And it's still the case that holding Vanguard's own funds on other platforms can be cheaper. For example, if I switch my ISA to Interactive Investor, it would be cheaper all in than it would be to hold exactly the same fund on Vanguard's platform. So I hope you're listening, Vanguard. Another little quibble is that their money market fund is only available in income form. There isn't an accumulation version of this fund available for retail investors. Now, there is an accumulation version for institutional investors. So in theory, they could make this available to everyone else as well. Why is accumulation better in this case? I think speaking to people, they have a lot of difficulty understanding the fact that the price of this thing varies in a ramp-like fashion. Intuitively, I think it's much easier to understand if the price is just steadily increasing as the income is reinvested. So hopefully that's another change which Vanguard is at least thinking about. Now, I mentioned I've changed my portfolio as a result of these new funds being made available. These are the changes which I've made. Now, people who've been watching my channel for a while will know that I've changed my core investment slowly over time. When I first simplified my portfolio such that it only contains one fund, the first choice I made for that global fund was this FTSE Global All Cap Index Fund that had a bit of a tilt towards medium caps and small caps, which I thought would outperform over the long term. But because of that tilt, the fund was relatively expensive. The expense ratio was 0.23%. Now, at a certain point, I thought maybe small caps will outperform, but surely I'd be better off making the fee lower because that's always going to outperform because I'm not paying away so much of the returns. And that's guaranteed. So then I decided to switch my core holding into FTSE Developed World XUK. 
So I've excluded all of emerging markets and I've excluded the UK. The UK part's almost irrelevant because it's only 4% of a global fund anyway. The holding is smaller than Apple. But I didn't want to exclude emerging markets. That was more to do with making the fee lower. And the fee's considerably lower at 0.14%. Now, after this latest release of their accumulation ETFs on their own platform, I've decided to switch my core investment holdings into VHVG. This is the FTSE Developed World USITS ETF. So now I'm not excluding the UK, although that makes hardly any difference, but I am excluding emerging markets, not because I want to, but just to keep the fee down. So that is my single holding on Vanguard, 100% in that global equity fund. Now, if you look at the returns of those three funds over time, here I've shown the return on the three since 2019. And you can see the only one which really stands out as being different was the global all cap fund, where the small cap tilt has hurt performance. The other two developed world funds, one with the UK, one without it, are almost lying on top of each other. That's the red and black lines. And if we look at the top 10 holdings of those three funds, you can see why they're almost identical in terms of returns because they're almost identical in terms of their holdings. The two developed world funds both contain roughly equal amounts of Apple, 4.7% for VHVG, 4.9% for FTSE Developed World X UK. The only one which is quite different is the global all cap fund, which of course has less of those mega caps. And that's because of its tilt to smaller companies. That only holds 3.7% of Apple. But you can see that the relative holdings are all quite similar. So thank you to Vanguard for finally making these funds available on their own platform. Maybe they could also make some other changes, maybe make that money market fund accumulation, perhaps lower the fee on their global accumulation fund, maybe introduce tools for automatic rebalancing. There's always things you can do to improve a platform. But overall, I think they basically tick the boxes now in terms of what they have available. You can build a very good portfolio very easily, with just a handful of funds, in my case, just one fund. Now, don't forget, if you do want to get our weekly market roundup, you'll find a link in the description below. And as always, thank you for listening.